Welcome back. Going and it's going to be exciting. Jesus Christ. <laughs> There was a YouTube video playing on that PC that I guess auto-played in that Twitch article. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me and everyone else that was watching. <laughs> hey, the reason that I have this article pulled up, uh, I didn't see this. Someone uh, sent it to us in the break. So I guess kind of jumping back to news real quick. Uh, I sh We should note that this has now been removed. The blog post was put up by Twitch and now it's been removed. Uh, but essentially, the blog post said that uh, they are announcing plans to launch a new program for streamers on the platform, offering them a way of earning a reliable source of income by streaming for a specific amount of hours. Uh, GameSpot.com, who has auto-embedded videos that auto-play, uh, <laughs> says that it's unclear if this program will indeed launch at all after the post being removed or whether changes to it could be made before it resurfaces. Um, they called it the ads incentive program mm -hmm. and it will present personalized offers to select streamers at launch in exchange for a flat payout. Streamers will need to stream a certain number of hours while running ads. Twitch said, quote, we know how important reliable monthly income is to its creators. That's why today we're introducing predictability into a revenue source that rarely provides it ads. The goal is simple help you earn a more predictable monthly income through ads with no ceiling on earning potential. I didn't see any of this. I didn't even know this launched. Uh, it was only there for a minute or two. I remember like uh, they tweeted that to me. Um, my mod showed it to me and it was just like, it was just there, just showed like a, a basic setup. I was like, okay, well, I mean, that's an interesting idea. We'll see how that plays out. Yeah. Uh, it It is... <laughs> It's a weird conversation for me to at least discuss. And I think Cohen and, and I think Zeke are also in somewhat of a weird space discussing it. Cause like this already exists in a way uh, behind the scenes, I guess um, there's a lot of contracts that people have signed over the past couple of years that very closely imitates what they're basically trying to put out here. Um, you think this is going to replace those contracts? I don't replace uh, maybe, I don't, I, I don't know what word um, I would use, but. One thing, though, now, not, not of course, talking about any of the details in, in the contracts, but one thing I'm interested about in, in that stuff yeah. is the exclusivity. Uh, exclu I can never say that word properly. Exclusivity. 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 Yeah. So, so, like, for instance, if a, if a streamer were to sign up for a program like that and, and they would be guaranteed that payout from Twitch, would they then not be able to go on YouTube or any other service? Yeah. Um, that would be very interesting if so. Like Same. that that would be a quick way for, for Twitch to kind of get around that. It would also have a lot of of stipulations on, you know, what Twitch could do with that content and things of that nature as well. Um, but frankly, I mean, I, I think something like that is awesome. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Twitch is better off the more ads people run. That's what we know. They've been very public about uh it through various interviews and ex-employees. They've been public about the fact that the top streamers on Twitch lose them money that that because of of the way that their their setups work and the way that their their data and infrastructure works like the largest streamers on the platform are not like the cash cows um the people that are really making the money are the plethora of mid-tier streamers that are actually running ads yeah so the more that twitch can, can <laughs> the more that twitch can can utilize that that line of profit for them while also helping the people that are streaming and incentivize that in a positive way where both sides win, the better for everybody. Yep. The only person that loses is the viewer. Sorry. It, it Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the, the true. That's uh, the only person that loses. The, the truest statement out of all of that is it's a worse experience for a viewer because there's more ads. Ultimately. Unless at, at that point, it's then, then you start talking about the incentivized to sub and, you know, by bypassing ads completely, you're doing that and, and things like that. So yeah. I should say the only people that, that, that lose are people that watch unsubbed channels. That would be yes. a better way to say that. Not yeah. viewers in yeah. general. Because if you're a sub, then you are actually not losing anything. If anything, as a sub, you're, the streamer that you are watching is being more supported by the sack. So yeah. you wouldn't lose at all. Say, um, say that again. Go, what was that? Or don't have Twitch Turbo. Yeah. <laughs> Which say the, the people that are unsubbed are losing out? <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. That's well, correct. again, that like from, from, to hear. 
<laughs> I I know. And if only there was some way they could rectify that. But no, it's it's the uh the, the big thing though is that from the looks of the the pre-release stuff, we'll we'll call it, we'll call it unreleased since they retracted it so quickly. Yeah, they retracted it. From the looks very of fast. that, I mean some of the asks are pretty significant. Like I think one of them was running like 4 minutes of ads an hour. Hmm. That's a lot of ads. I mean you're talking about like considering that a lot of casters stream like 8 12 hours, I mean, you're talking like a half hour of ads. Um, which is a long time. I mean, that's that's like getting to be comparable from like TV back in the day. Um, not near it. I'd say for what thirty minutes of of normal TV, I think it was like seven or eight minutes of ads. Like, There's a lot more than, than you would think. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's it, that's well, a, that's a look, big approach to it. Yeah, that's you know yeah. that's a well, big sixty thing. minutes, and you only watch get like forty series. minutes of actual content. Yeah, it's like twenty minutes of ads. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you watch any series on. On like a streaming service, Netflix or whatever, right? You'll see each episode is 22 minutes long, which means eight, eight minutes. minutes of ads. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I had this debate with Chat not too long ago. We were talking about just this thing, and uh, you know, like I, to me, I I don't like pre-roll ads. I feel like that is that's that hurts growth for channels. It does more harm than good. I don't, I don't know the find answer an argument to here. that, you know, but <laughs> I, I definitely agree. noticed that follows have dropped off since pre-rolls ads because when you go to a channel, you know, and you're like, oh, seven, you know, or two of seven ads or whatever, you're like, ah, okay, I'm clicking off this guy and I'm going to go watch, you know, click around. Um, but like at the same time, when I talk to chat, you know, like this Twitch is still a free service and it's still something that you could just tune in for free. You know, you don't, they don't charge you anything. So it's like, how do they mitigate? Because like people have this fantasy, like they play a free to play game and then they get irritated if they monetize anything. Well, then that free to play game is not going to be around for much longer because it's going to close. They have to make some kind of money. Right. right. And so does Twitch. So there has to be a, a balance between what is okay for viewers who understand that and, you know, and, and the streamer who's going to run the ads, you know, how do you play this balancing game? So, I don't. It, it's it's still kind of up there, but the, for the most part, chat seemed like my at least my chat was like pretty much okay with the idea of seeing some ads. They just don't want like you know a ton in a in a in a in a they they really don't like automated ads. Lots of streamers do that. They just they're playing their yeah. Yeah. battle royale, and then the you know right in the middle of the action, boom, there comes the ad. You know they hate that. Um. Cream uh, has been doing with that uh, the, his Twitch contract for a while. He controls his ads, so he only runs them when there's a law or if there's a break or if he's gonna, you know, nothing's happening. He's just talking. We're planning something. So boom, he you know he runs the ads, and I think that's a better way to do it. It is, yeah. It's a lot more work it, though. <laughs> it puts I'm more saying. work on you. Yeah, you have to remember, and that's kind of the pain in the butt, you know. Right, but you yeah. Know. Three minutes, three minutes every two hours, three minutes of ads every two hours has been working for me for like seven years. Like yeah. people you kind people of have baked into your, good. No your one complains. Yeah. Like everybody knows. And it's nice, nice to get up every two hours to get, you know, water break, you know, take a piss, yeah. you know, whatever. So like, I mean, you, you got to find the thing that's right for you. And the thing that I always consider like people who do like these long, like final fantasy speed runs, it's like, you got to sit there for like five hours straight and not do anything. And then I'm just like, fuck man. But with like, if you're, if you're doing like battle royales or like things that have like matches and stuff, like in between matches, like I don't understand. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, Maybe I, I'm just, I get it. It makes sense. Um, there was someone said something and I was going to, uh, now I just blanked completely blanked. It's all right. Oh, now I remember. Yeah. Uh, if you think back to like, probably about two years ago before really ads, I, I think ads uh, are much more common now on the platform. But I think the reason is because a lot of these contracts were signed for some of the bigger channels on the platform and they started running ads, right? And there was a bunch of pushback at the beginning of that. I, you don't really see it that much now. Now it's just like, oh yeah, that person runs a lot of ads. It's normalizing. But it's totally yeah. normalized. And that was the whole point of the contracts from Twitch, right? Like it was yeah. to normalize ads on the platform. Uh, and, and now it's kind of a joke in a lot of streams where people are just running ads on cooldown as fast as they can fucking run them on some of these giant channels. Uh, and like the ad revenue in a lot of ways is making more than sub revenue on those channels uh, <laughs> because they're running you them like every six or seven minutes. 
Use cream as an example. He has an emote that says hashtag ad, and his chat is reminding him. To yeah, run they're, his ad. they're reminding the streamers to run it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think, you know, I, I don't want to speak for cream, but I think that's probably because he was so open with his chat and now yes. his chat wants to support the stream as possible. That's, and I think that's, that's another big thing. thing. Yeah. Be open yeah. with them. Yes. That was, that was another, a, a good thing on, on Twitch's end is, is they made it so ads become more about supporting your streamer. They right. made it. So it's kind of like a, uh, you know, it's, it's, an, we're all in this together. We enjoy this show, so if we watch the ads, then we're helping in our way support. Which, to be blunt, is what they're doing. Like yeah. for for all the viewers that sit around and keep watching ads that a streamer does, you're supporting them in, in many cases without giving them a penny, uh, and that's very meaningful support. So you know, I mean, it's it's become a more communal thing. It's it, the streamer wins, the chat wins because they're you know they feel that they're contributing, and which absolutely wins is they're taking the bulk of the ad revenue. So yeah, you know, every everyone's getting a little bit. The, yeah. the uh, unsubbed viewer who's like, how can I help? You know, that's that's how they help. The ads, you yeah. know, or clicking the sponsored link or whatever. Even nothing, things that doesn't have anything to do with actual money coming out of anybody's pocket are the small things that people can do to help their favorite streamer, whoever that is. Yeah. And um, you, you even see some of the bigger streamers like uh, Hassan, for example. It, it's become like a, a bit of a stream where every hour he'll run an ad, but he'll do it by making it a part of the news is like a goof. So it'll be like, oh my God, Joe Biden just says that we need to run our 60 minute ad break guys or some shit like that, right? He does it 10 times better than what I just did, but he makes it fun, right? And so the stream is, Dude, it's enjoyable. To be fair, the absolute best way to sell out. Yeah. Make it a joke. Yes. That mm -hmm. is, that that makes selling out about a thousand percent more liked by your audience. hundred percent. Absolutely. You're make a good joke. Yeah. Not wrong about that. So, do I think a program like this will be welcomed by most of the partners on the platform? Yeah, because a lot of partners are already in something similar uh, in a lot of ways. And it ain't bad, right? <laughs> if we they sign the contracts, that it's not a bad time. Um, it says further in the GameSpot article, as originally outlined, the program will be available to Twitch partners and affiliates who will see it in the Ads Manager dashboard on the website. Once the streamer accepts the offer, they'll set the ads manager to the rate detailed in the incentive. After streaming the minimum number of hours uh, required, the streamer will collect their income at the end of the month. So seems fairly automated. Uh, we'll see. I, this probably gets posted on Monday. I'd be surprised. I hope they pursue it. Yeah, I, I do too. Because that, that posted it, on a Friday. I bet you they took it down and said, let's save it for Monday and take the, take the week. Could've. But that, that's, that's a system that at the end of the day is going to be the most rewarding for mid and smaller streamers, like mid tier and starting streamers like that, having that kind of guaranteed income, knowing that they're going to be able to pay X bills and being able to plan and schedule that. Like that's, that's huge. Yes. Um, With back when I was starting, that was a big point of stress for a long period of time. hundred percent. So yeah, being able to click a button and be like, okay, I know that's money. Money is coming as long as I meet these streamer hours. Like that's yes. Mm -hmm. it's big. I think it's big. I think also the, the idea of having a number of hours that you have to stream on a monthly basis is also good for a lot of streamers. What is going to be very interesting is the inevitable data mining that is going to happen yeah. where yeah. people find out exactly what metrics are getting what offers because those offers are going to be true for every specific channel. So it is going to be essentially like we're going to see from Twitch's perspective, like where they feel the most value is. Are they, do they value long-term stable growth or, you know, more recent skyrocket type growth? Like there's going to be a whole lot of questions that are going to be answered from just seeing how they comfortable they feel um, compensating people. Yeah. That's very good also, point. some people were confused because when it says like, you know, run four minutes of ads for an, you know, in an hour, and then it says stream for 40 hours. Is that, so that means run four minutes of ads every hour, right? Yeah. Yep. 40 hours yep okay and i think i think someone in chat was saying zizzer and talked about like his his monthly hours is 220 uh which is from a lot of contracts that i've seen quite high uh, he <laughs> so, has to stream 220 hours a month yeah that's apparently what he was saying on his stream the other day according to my chat uh which that's a lot uh, that's a lot of hours streamed. I don't hit that mark uh, except on maybe a, a big month, uh, wow. where there's a big game out. I think I am averaging like a, 
190, maybe 200 uh, a month. I don't know Is about that you guys. 55 hours a week? Yeah, 55 hour weeks. That's what chat just said. The, the only thing that I could, I would hope by that yeah. is that, yeah, that's, that's eight hours a day, every single day, almost eight hours a day, every single day. The that's only thing that I would hope significantly by that is that he is getting like, like, hopefully that's a, a bit bigger than yes. normal <laughs> like contract. He is getting, you know, like maybe that's some kind of special deal. He worked out by choice. Right. You have to take that into consideration. It probably was. Zizarin is a marathon streamer. He is a marathon streamer where his life is in, as he has said before, his life is responsibly set up for marathon streaming. Um, he has a support structure. He does it all the time. Like he, you know, works out, stays healthy. So like that, maybe he requested that many hours. He probably did. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I never, again, I, that, I never heard I, that, of that. I don't think they ever, month. I don't think crazy. they ever forced that on somebody. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. Anyways, I didn't mean to turn this into a 30 minute conversation, but Hey, I'm glad we did regardless. Let's talk about sure. the eco server. Burke, why don't you, um, I'll pull up some footage of the early days of the eco server. Why don't you talk a little bit about what this is? Because I think for a lot of people, they just don't know what eco is to begin with. So maybe that's a good place to start. What uh, What is this game that you and the uh, the crew played the past month, 24 days or so ago is when you all started? Yeah, it, well, it, I think eco came out, oh, what was the release date for that? It came out a while, but, while back. And it's been early access for a while. And there were some streamers who played it. You know, they had some fun with it here and there. Um, we, I think last year was the 2021. Uh, January, as you guys know, is usually a pretty dead month. You know, there's not a lot going on in January. So it's a great time to do like some uh, events. I, I, I think it differ. there is some cool stuff going on in January every year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, say so myself. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I, think, I think he meant watchable. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> My feelings. You have hurt them. So we Next kind of uh, we wanted old. something to do in January, something that 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 could be fun and then a little goofy. And I don't think anyone expected Eco to take off the way it did. We thought, okay, you know, like um, when I was talking to Willy Wonka about it, who does a wonderful job of setting all this up for us. You know, Willy Wonka. Um, yeah, the Willy Wonka. Yeah, wow. he's a he's a cream mod who has kind of become be. a universal mod for uh, the entire late shift as a whole. Um, he's a berry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, we thought the game would probably be a couple days, <laughs> a couple days that we would play, and it became this complete other thing. So let me explain the game. The idea of this is, it, eco. It's about the ecology of the of the planet. You know. There is uh, an asteroid in the sky, and you can. Its game is completely moddable, so you can set up the, if you want the asteroid to impact in 24 hours, or if you want it to do a month, you can set it up however you want. The idea of the, of the people on the world is to build up to the tech to be able to destroy the asteroid, so it doesn't destroy your planet. And the pathway to getting to that is basically like a social experiment, because people have wants and needs um you could set up your own business in this you can mine the earth you can uh be a cook food is important in this game you can uh, be a tailor to make uh make clothing you uh hunt the animals you chop down trees you mine it into the ground you you get oil you do everything you could think of for industry for creating and crafting and then on top of that you have to socialize around people with you and people sometimes will cut corners they will want to get to this resource and not properly dispose of their pollutants, which is like, you know, if they're doing smithing, they, they can create uh, tailings, which is a pollutant that they have to deal with. Um, you know, or, uh, or if they're, they're doing uh, something that creates air pollution, it starts putting CO2 into the air. So you start cutting down trees and the CO2 starts affecting the world. So the entire world it becomes affected by what the players are doing. You can have species go dead. Deer can go extinct. You can have the sea starting to change color. You can have plant life start to die. You can have the seas begin to rise because as the oil, you don't see them. They don't have a representation of the uh, polar ice caps in the game, but the sea levels can rise to a point that it will completely just, you know, take over your building and everything that you've created and 
<laughs> the life on the planet has gone to crap. You you can't make anything anymore. You have destroyed yourselves through your technological innovation. And at the same time, with the social aspect of it, you could create a government. You can pass laws. Um, you elect a president. You can elect uh, different people for different positions. You can have someone elected for like in, you know uh, uh, infrastructure. So like they're literally planning out how the road system will go. And so players can go out and build the road themselves and be paid by the government to do that. <laughs> it's just so much layers on top of layers, like an onion with this game, that it was a natural breeding ground for a role play environment. So we kind of loosely did a role play in 2021. This time we did a much more hardcore, you know, with rules and mods. Uh, which is another thing that I'll, I'll call Willy Wonk out for is like he got a great team of viewers. I wish I could say all their names right now, but uh, they have they created all kinds of custom mods like they added uh, with support by the devs. By the way, the devs are all in on this. They love what we're doing with this. Oh, that's that's great. That's they a dream like right a, there. <laughs> there was a, a a police system that was added. So like you could use a lockpick to break it to people's homes. And this is not even a part of the game. So they could break it to people's homes and like get into a chest and steal like two things. You're only limited to two things that you can steal and then sneak back out. But as you do that, you leave a clue. So then the police can come. So somebody in the role play can be like, I got broken into. And the police shows up and he's scanning the area. All right, let me look around. Oh, I found a fingerprint. Let's go back and analyze this fingerprint. And they scan the they scan the fingerprint with three possible names that come up of who that could be. So they have to go and interrogate those three people in a role play setting to find, you know, to, what, 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 you, do you have anything to do with Jeb McCoy? You do, you, were you ever around his area? Jeb McCoy, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know where we got some evidence here. You know, like the, the role play element was was so good you had uh uh classy packs running around with a character called <laughs> called stump <laughs> it was what running for president do? oh yeah. nice <laughs> wait who ended up being yeah, president so, stump I see- on the stump i yeah, get it stump yeah stump. Stump, stump won the election oh, uh won. probably he won on the you know on the premise of you know just don't look up you know <laughs> oh, <laughs> for God. the asteroids <laughs> love it keep your eyes on the ground you know keep working uh, they, we had a presidential debate, a presidential debate. We had four pe- contestants up there, contestants, but four uh, people trying to president. And we had a yeah. beautiful presidential debate that they were this arguing with okay. each other about. It was great how they did. We have we had uh, Dr. Gulan who was running the news <laughs> and he was running around interviewing people. And then they would literally put out a paper and they put the paper in the game that you could go and read in the game. Wow. Um, I didn't realize it was that was, in depth. It was crazy in depth, and uh, they had. He even was like role playing um, uh, two news services that that were f- competing against each other, but he was both the same. So we had to bribe him sometimes, you know, to get our news out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. well, the thing is, with, with stuff like this, like on on paper, like someone who is uninitiated into to RP and stuff is like on paper. It sounds like this: like, all right, I'm going to play a game with friends. All right, yeah, I jump in the game. What's first? Get a job. Wait, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm supposed to get a job. Yeah, get a you, job. You like, literally, could get a dude, job. Yes. Like, wait a minute. This is not why I play video games. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy. He was a uh, he was a mega conglomerate. His name was Tyrosin, and he literally had employees in the game that he would pay for them to go down into mining, get to mining, or you know, processing metals and stuff like that. Like you have to do. You have to buy people's food to give you. Um, labor points that you then spend on your workshop to make stuff. So the entire game had an infrastructure system built into it for players to interact, run a business, and uh, you know have this system in place for everybody needing other people to do other things. Like you can't do it all yourself. If you're a carpenter, you need nails. You have to go to the blacksmith to get nails. And the blacksmith needs someone to go into the mines and, and gather iron. And the, they, the person gathering iron needs a cart because it's too much to carry by hand. So he needs a carpenter to help him with a cart. And it just this circle of infrastructure and uh, economy, you, have to, you can create your own coin, your own money, and you back it with something. 
in in this role play, that I was so I had dumb. I, had a I, I don't line. know why you would want to. That's I don't know if we should go down that path. <clears throat> Seems silly. Yeah, <laughs> look at this little point. <laughs> But like in, in my in my role play of this, I had a gold mine, and I was trying to get the gold to be mint, the mint for the for the currency, and it was a big role play scheme on my part to get them to do that. And it just like everyone. Oh, by the way, lots of people. This is the presidential debate. This is after it. By the way, this is the oh, okay. where the the criminals are stealing stuff from there. <laughs> okay. You should stop. They're, they're what are you doing? And stuff. <laughs> you roll it back. Like I don't know. 20 ish minutes, you'll see the actual debate live. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah there they all are. So, like, they're being interviewed by Jake News, who is uh, Dr. Gluon's uh, news guy. You know, you could you can see the name Jake News. Yeah. <laughs> I see a stump little up play there. on words there. <laughs> but yeah, it was a blast, man. Like, there are so many people who are brand new to role play in this. It is, Eco is a great entry level thing. They didn't know what to do. We were just like, just make a character and just be that character. You know, you don't have to keep, make something elaborate. It doesn't have to be over the top. Just have fun. And there were so many in here who'd never done it before um, that just had a blast doing it for the first time. That's great. Do you know how many people did you all... played? Did, over you, the... oh. did, you, did you win? <laughs> oh, yeah. Who won, by the way, I guess also. Oh, in the like, did my criminal empire won? Well, did all of you win. Yeah. Did the server win? Oh, no, no. Um, oh. Through the actions of the crime syndicate, uh, no, they did not win. <laughs> so my my that... crime syndicate was dedicated to polluting the planet to raise the water because I was at war with Lake Town, and so we wanted to flood Lake Town because they were surround they were on a lake, and so when the waters rose, Lake Town became Atlantis. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not bad. And it's their fault. They were supposed to pass laws to stop us, but they were so, you know, they fought each other and they couldn't, you know, they, in the role play, in the context of the role play, they were. Uh, Did you just you say know, you flooded a town, but it was their fault? It was their fault, yes. They could have stopped us. <laughs> uh, Ubisoft <laughs> is looking or for they some. Uh, during a movie or? <laughs> <laughs> It was all because of that Thomas Chive, Gassy's, Gassy's character. You know, we, we had a rivalry between him and, and my family, the Slasher family. And, uh, you know, very he just, friendly. He should have picked up those rocks. You know, if he had just picked up those rocks, everything had been fine. But rivalries began on day one, so, and we flooded Lake Town because of him. There you go. So, what, what happens in that situation? Does everyone just stand around, and then all of a sudden, like a giant meteor comes out, and, and then the server deletes itself? No, 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 no. You can. They're still playing today. They're doing recovery efforts. Oh wait, the meteor so the, hits. Really? It doesn't it end the it game. Hit. It hit. It doesn't end the game. It when it hits, it there's a huge crater, and then there's small asteroids that that hit all the other aspects. You are in a bad state of affairs. The planet is in dire straits. So these role play players dug underground and they created a city underground <laughs> that's awesome they're living underground now and doing uh relief efforts to rebuild the world and they can technically do that it's going to take a while but they can do recovery efforts to save the planet now when lake town was flooding they were building walls around the lake <laughs> to keep the water back so they were built like they, almost like sandbags they were putting sandbags down, but they were building walls and it kept getting higher until you know, Cletus tried his best, but then, you know, it just went too high. And it uh, the entire Lake Town flooded, and that was the end of that. But now they're all living underground. That's pretty sick. So the meteor doesn't, like, it just devastates. It doesn't end, like, Dev game. It doesn't end the, end the game. No, okay. you could keep playing. World or, Out know. of curiosity, we, we like, to, does all, do all the animals on the surface die? Like, do all the plant, like, what, how, how bad is it when the meteor hits? It's pretty bad, yeah. they There's a lot of plant life that's dead. So, like, but they, they can grow farms underground as well. I think they could grow underground. I'm not certain. I need to ask them that. But, that's what, um, for next year, you should do day one, the meteor hits. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, that'd be great. It might be a possibility. We're gonna. I think that's what uh, they're looking at now. They're analyzing. You can call um, it Fallout seventy seven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that reminds me before. of that uh, that Minecraft. Uh, uh, how you would do? You would like just be on like one square with a tree or something, whatever that was called. Yeah. Uh, that that mode of the gameplay. Mod. Yeah, I, where you have know. to like 
know, start cool. from almost nothing and build everything else. Or whatever. Yeah. That'd be cool. Skyblock. There you go. Oh, we learned okay. a few things from this too. What Skyblock was? It took us too long. Like government is such a major part of the game. Um, like politics, you mean? Like yeah, the politics, politics and stuff. And we, yeah. we think we need to have that on day one in the future. You know, just so like you can have some kind of structure. Because like when if somebody's being a criminal, you know, like what what I was doing, I, I have free reign for so long to cause so much chaos, and there's not a real political system. Once they started getting the the actual government installed and they had police, we had a trial and it was, <laughs> you know, we had uh, Danitaj as the judge and he was overriding, you know, like we had, we had people set up as uh, lawyers and, you know, present the evidence, you know, uh, and Cringer was playing Dingus. He was building roads everywhere he went. Cringer's roading a road system. He called it DMCA. <laughs> I don't nice. remember. I don't remember the breakdown of that, but, uh. Uh, Gassy was the Chive guys who became well, like Car Comic Motor Cars now. Association. Yeah. yeah, something like that. It was exactly something like that. Yeah, yeah there's the flooding. You can see that it's it's a, it gets way worse than that. So it just it floods the water. water. <laughs> yeah, it, it goes up to the roofs. It goes up to the roofs. It Jeez, gets that oh high. God. The pollution was like uh, my conglomerate, my evil conglomerate, would created Project Eco, which was the point of like flood. They put they underground. They created steam engines, which like, I don't know, 20, 30 of them. And they were just pumping CO2 into the, uh, into the air. <laughs> That's what? all they were doing. Just pumping it in. Oh, air my to flood God. The Jesus. Oh, my God. That's amazing. It's they can be a real game. evil son of a bitch in this. <laughs> you can. <laughs> yes, you absolutely can. Now, they can stop you. Um, afterward, they started passing laws once they finally got the, oh, this is a, 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 a cult here. Oh, nice. <laughs> This is uh, the the priesthood of Gaia, and that's Mandy. This is her first time doing role play, and she killed it. T with Mandy is her name on Twitch. She oh, killed Mandy. it. Her first time oh, doing role play, and she is uh, she's being the priestess, and you have to uh, your donation uh, changes on whether how well you're saved or not. So uh, the more you smart. give, yeah, the higher in tier you go on being. You know, low tier have a twenty percent. Diamond tier has a hundred percent of being saved from the asteroid. Very Scientology. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yeah, she was great. And, and, like they had a catchphrase called "Hut Hut," and she had an emote for it. And everybody, you, you would say "Hut Hut," and you have to jump when you say it. They they had a whole elaborate thing. It was just so well done and thought out. And tell I think me more is, about this. this really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued. Uh, so, yeah, with, with those, with those, those door -to -door. With, uh, with those steam things, like, could someone have just, like, invaded your area and broken them down? Like, is there any kind of PvP, or is there any, like, how? No PvP. How the game them? does not have any life or death. So, like, you, there's no, oh. if you go underwater, there's no life gauge, none of that stuff. So, like, your character can never die. So, you're, they, uh, I think they did it intentionally. They don't want anybody feeling any kind of pressure in that regard that they're going to lose their character or something. It's just, uh, how would they have now, huh? How would they say laws? Oh. Laws stops it. Oh. So, and in our role play, it, in a, just an open server of people doing that, um, laws can stop that. But in our role play setting, we have police that would come in and bang and, and tear that up. You know, like we have uh, modding um, that because we had an incredible mod team who spent a crazy amount of time. Like that camera on the, the guy with the red backpack, that's not even in the game. They created that camera and they and the animation for it to, for it to be on his shoulder like that, so he can look like he's filming a live news broadcast. Uh, it's just really really cool. You can awesome. dig into anything. They're now they're uh, if I remember correctly, the the, the devs are going to be eventually adding. There's not even water physics in this game yet. Hmm. It's just you know the they're going to add like water physics. They're going to have nations. So like you could have right now if you make a government, it's a government for the entire planet. But eventually, there's going to be like, oh, you know, this island whatnot, have yeah. its own government. This these people could be their own nation over here, and they're going to add boats as well. So, this is so much coolness to this that we uh, pretty much are planning to do this every January at this point. Is it released? It is. It's early access. Oh, so it's not released yet. Oh, it's not, not released. No. Yeah. It's, they're still working on it. Cool. Yeah, is there weather? One of my mods is asking. No, there's no weather. No, okay. they, they. I hope that's something that they add. They have it has in-game voice chat and it's phenomenally good. Like it's that's better good. than some AAA companies do. It's like proximity chat. Yeah, 
Nice. How many people do you know, like unique wise, uh, that were on the server over the course of its, I guess, still running? Do you know how many people logged in and played? I, I definitely know it's just like, I want to say 150 at least. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. But uh, if online, we could so only support 65. No, no. Only one server. Like, uh, I think it's like a hundred and it was 65 that we could have at any given time. Concurrent the server limitations. Yeah. Oh, the, the game still has like when, when, when a lot of people are mining in the early times, we're, we're trying to get it up to a hundred. I know Willie's working on getting the mod team to have it be a hundred supported at any given time. And, but the server gets to chugging later on when people have like, they mine something and then they, it cascades like a bunch of blocks on the ground. Well, those blocks are loose on the ground. It's like a car could hit them and knock them around. They're not, uh, they're not locked in. So when you have thousands of those, you know, because people ain't picking up their mess or whatever, it kind of makes the server chug a little bit. So they're still trying to figure that out too. Nice. Sounds like a fun, uh, I, I was, Gassy was trying to get me to jump in and I didn't uh, reluctantly now after seeing all the, the craziness. So, Maybe next January, yeah. circle around again, especially if you guys are doing the like, the the post asteroid situation. That sounds like it could be fun. Yeah. Little little fall. No, yeah. Like, uh, I I tried to invite. I wanted all of you in this. I thought you all would have a blast doing this. But uh, this the, the just the way the game goes, anything can happen, and we have certain rules in it. But it's not like crazy hardcore rules. You know what I mean? Like where it's annoying to play. Right. Um. Just some basic stuff, but you know, we every time we do it, we learn new stuff, and uh, I just, <laughs> I, I, I can't wait for the next time. Next, now I got to wait a year for it. <laughs> <laughs> but I got something to look forward to in, in January. Exactly. Yeah, it's also I, I think having the devs on your side uh, in terms of creating a lot of that will change uh, the game, obviously, as it did this time, and, and probably next year as well. Especially if they have that long to implement stuff, and you guys are sending them feedback and yeah. all that. Seems pretty cool. Uh, what what does Eco cost just generally uh, on oh, Steam? And, and I guess expensive, actually. I guess while you're looking that up, like if if your server is not running, can someone that's watching this just jump into a server by themselves? Yes. Like, what is that process? So it's like it's like usually thirty bucks. It's twenty five right now because of a sale. Okay. Um, there are any given time. There's tons of servers to join. Like you could do this solo if you want to, um, or you could just join a game that's already running. They're always running. We have a community server that's still going. Okay. People can still hop in and join. Um, there's a, there's an, I think there's an application process for the RP one, but they'll probably approve you anyway because you know the the meteor crashing is kind of, was kind of the soft ending of this season. Um, so now people that are just getting in there, getting in there because they want to help <laughs> save the planet for what it's left, you know, <laughs> and it's such a mess right now, but they're trying. But um, yeah, there's tons of, of servers that get in there and play. It's not something where you have to hope that there's like a just a role play thing going on or something. You can get in there and play right now with a group of people. Cool. Cool. That sounds good. We'll definitely uh, touch base maybe next January. See what happens. We'll, see I will add on. this one thing. If people have like, it, and if some people might be thinking that they want to get into role play and they miss this, um, there is another role play thing that's going to happen with uh, Venalus for the Atlas Dark Side RP that's coming out. Oh, Atlas, very okay. very soon. Yeah, it's like it's darksiderp.net is the website. Nice. If you're looking for role play and you miss this one and you're like, oh man, I would like to get into it, Dark Side always runs an amazing role play server every. Uh, every year, yeah, like multiple, multiple ones. But you know, you, you remember Atlas guys, yeah. right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Atlas was yeah. Uh, that was an experience on Twitch. Yeah. yeah. So basically, they took Atlas. No offense to the Atlas devs, I know they're doing the best they can, but like what with what Venice's team has done, they made it incredible. It is an awesome experience to play on that. They they did mods. They have some server rules. They have this. They have tons of server space on there for like. I don't even know. I think he said thousands of people he can fit on this. Jeez. So they have incredible ship battles. Uh, they have a new trailer out for it. It's just absolutely over the top, and I highly recommend it. I'm going to be in it, and uh, maybe you guys could try it too. You might love it. Cool. When is that? When, Very cool. What was the date on that or the month on that? Soon? Well, uh, well I, I don't know if Vin might strangle me. <laughs> but I don't, don't, but, um, uh, don't leak it. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I don't have a leak. I he he's I, he has. I don't think he has an official date, but like okay. I'm I'm hoping that he chooses March. Yeah, that sounds like a good, uh, <laughs> good decision. I don't know how I'm that will do in February. 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 That's a real scary. quick way to chase away variety streamers. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. February is a little busy for sure. For sure. Yeah, I hope he. I'm hoping. I'm thinking, like like I said, he's gonna announce it. I'm sure. I'm 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 definitely using my influence the best I can of my friend there to go to the heavy two march, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. That would make a lot of sense. It does last months. So, you know, it's not like something that'll be over, but you know, people always love to be at the beginning. Sure. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Zeke, you chased your white whale, black Dahlia. Did it work? Did Did it? Did you get it? I'm, I know the answer to this, but how long did it take you to get it working? Cause I remember this, this game gave you some issues on your old CD Ramathon uh, back in the day. Last year, I guess. Uh, multiple, multiple days of trying to figure it out. Yep. So let me think. Um, I want to say it was probably like I did a full uh, full stream trying to get it to work last year. So that's at least eight. <laughs> maybe nine. Okay. Add like the, the previous year. I'm not sure if I had it the first year, though. But the previous year, I don't know, add another eight or nine times. So it was like. 20 to 22 hours of troubleshooting on this game to try and get it to work because the thing is <laughs> if you try and go back and play old games or you remember like trying to play games with your PC uh not everything was universally compatible so you had to have uh fixes and workarounds and all that kind of stuff if you remember the days of trying to like they would ask you what sound card are you using? And anybody who was like, uh, you know, 25 or, or 25 or younger is just like, what the fuck is a sound card? Dude? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? SB? What? What's SB? I don't know what the fuck that means. SB, Sound Blaster. How about an A32? You, 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 you up on that? You got your Roland MIDI player? <laughs> MIDI? You know, that kind of shit. But more often than not, it's audio audio problems with old games, with old CD-ROMs. And that's what this one had for sure. Uh, last year, we almost had it. <laughs> Except there was a stutter in the video. And it wasn't matching up to the audio. So we were trying to fix that, trying to fix that, trying to fix that. Uh, and uh, all credit due to uh, Hookah91, who is a uh, regular viewer and, and sub of mine, who took it upon themselves. It was like, we're gonna get this fucking working next year. You mark my words. <laughs> and I was like, "All right, buddy, you are intense about this." Like, okay, <laughs> so uh, who can spend like I'm? I'm guessing a little bit of time last year, like thinking about it, looking at stuff. Like, all right, here's the here's the patch for you. All right, dude, let's go. So uh, what ended up working was was a a uh, a newer patch, or I don't know if it's a newer patch, but like a patch we didn't find before that worked with the game. Through a program called uh, Win, oh god, what was it called? <laughs> it was called like Win DF, D, DX or something like that. That you run, you run Black Dahlia inside this program, and then the program runs it from there and it fixes it. It's like a, <clears throat> you know, it's like a virtual <laughs> machine inside of a virtual machine yeah. type setup. Okay. Yeah, well, not a virtual machine, but just like a patch. Uh, like the, you run the you run the game inside the patch. Like the patch is not in the game. The patch en- en- encompasses the game, like sure. kind of a thing. But anyway, um, so we finally got it working. It only took a couple hours, and we got to we got to play it. And I was fully expecting, and actually some like kind of hoping that uh it was gonna be bad <laughs> that it was awful after all this work well and people saying like uh um oh direct x rapper that's what it was dexter the dragon that's i'm guessing that's what it was anyways um i was kind of hoping it was going to be a bad game so i could be like all right hilarious spent you know however many hours trying to get this game to work and it sucks so we'll, we'll just stop playing it two hours in it actually is not too bad it wasn't too bad the 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 FMV the uh, was pretty well acted. The story was intriguing, uh, albeit misleading. Like if you know anything about Black Dahlia, like the Black Dahlia murder, yeah, uh, it took place in L.A. 
it was a uh a, a gal who wanted to be a star out in she wanted to be a hollywood star right and she ended up being like dismembered and and sliced up and all this kind of stuff and it was never it was unsolved mystery so i was like okay i'm ready for this like we're gonna do an unsolved mystery it actually takes place in cleveland uh during the 1940 41 the torso murders which was an actual thing um which it's has similarity oh weird yeah huh. it has similarities to um the black dahlia murder but the black dahlia actually ends up being something within the game like an item within the game so it has nothing to do with that but the similarities like that between the sucks. murders are there yeah it's weird <laughs> but it ended up being kind of a cool like indiana jones uh type of thing because it had to do with like uh, it was before America uh, entered World War II, and it was uh, uh, a Europe. It was called the European War from like from the states, like ah, Europe's all over there fighting the Nazis and you know all that stuff. Yeah. But uh, there was a lot of like uh, political intrigue, and and uh, you you actually are an agent of the COI, which was the precursor to the CIA. Um, and I can't remember what COI stands for, but it was it's similar to the CIA. They they deal in intelligence, and. Uh, you are uh, tasked to figure out what what kind of Nazi German uh, 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 what was it sleeper cells maybe or like undercover uh, German plot, and that's why you're here to to figure to suss out what's going on and stuff. And it ends up like leading you to like this whole like cult cultist thing that ha- that's happening. I only played through half the game. Like, I got to disc four. It's eight discs. By the way, oh wow, um, yeah, it's a it's a big fat game. Um, oh, and also, I forgot to mention part of the reason why this is this has been my white whale is not be, not only because it take, took so long, but last year, last CD Ramathon, towards the end of the stream, I was like, all right, let's try something again. And I, I like dropped disc two, and I was like, oh, let me grab that, and I rolled right over it, just I remember shattered. That. And I was like, well, that's it then, I guess. For this year of trying to play this game <laughs> i guess we'll try it again next year when i have like another copy of it so i ended up getting like a, a whole disc set, a whole eight discs uh off of ebay disc only set and uh yeah so it had it's, it was a cursed game but it ends up being fun and we it, i want to say it took too long to get to dennis hopper he was on the billing you know it took three discs to dennis, get to dennis hoppers hopper. in this game yeah, uh, there's actually like a rumor or whatever a uh, story behind the story is uh, one of the producers or developers or whatever publishers of this game or of this company that made the game uh, is like a golfing buddy. And he's like, hey, we're making this game, Dennis. You want to is like, yeah, you're my pal. Sure, I'll go fucking Dennis hopper it up in your game. So, yeah, he was he was in it. Took too long to get to him, but he was it was worth it. He's, you know, he's Dennis. Hopper. He's Dennis Hopper. Crazy. Yeah. 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 Um, the the I stopped playing it, and the reason why I didn't c- continue playing it is you're kind of you're kind of looking at it right now. It's fucking tedious. There's a lot of old on it, a lot of old on the point and click front. Like you gotta if you want it. I had to use that phone so long, and okay, it was one of those times where you use that phone. It's a rotary phone, so you have to. Click every number and wait for it to come back. And you ask for the for the correct name. And the game, being the asshole that it is, gives you five aliases for the same person. And the other thing is, not only first names, but last names too. So that's a lot of numbers that you have to dial. You it, like there was Lou. Lewis, Fielding, Fielder, uh, like I can't remember. It was like Fieldenstein or something like that. <laughs> and you have to try like all the permutations, and you type it in. You type it in, and uh, if you don't have the one exact thing, Fisherwall. That's what it was. Fielding, Fielding, Fielder, Fish, uh, a uh, Fisher, and Fisherwall, and Lou and Louie, or Lou and Lewis are the names. Um, and you have to know. That he, the only name that works is Lou Fisterwald. And it took me a fucking long time to get (laughs) the proper name. And uh, that, 
is part of the old. Like sure. that's part of the old. They're not forgiving at all. And there's apps. They give you no reason as to why it has to be Lou and not Lewis. Fisherwald, I understood, but whatever. The other old thing, the other thing that made me not want to play it, like there is, there was a a physical puzzle. Uh, it was a um, like a, a, a telescope shape thing with like uh, um, rings on it, and you click on the ring and drag it to turn it, and it is not precise. So you end up like clicking on something and dragging the wrong ring, and you're like, God fucking damn! <laughs> it's like drag it back and hope it registers correctly. And by the end of that stream, I was like, I'm not playing this anymore. It is, I am, I am too spoiled. I will not. <laughs> I, will, I could not be arsed to play this again. Thank you very much. Next game. Yeah. So that's why I quit playing. But back in the day, I would have totally, totally played all the way through it. Yeah. Old black. Well, at least I'm. I'm glad you got it to work. Right, like after after what last Me year, too. long long ass time. I'm glad it got to work. You caught yeah. the white whale, yeah, and then released it. Apparently, he did. Yeah, he did. Oh, I did uh, counterfeit bagel. I did play uh, King's Quest Six. I played it. I played it all the way through. I saw the credits twice. I got uh, at the highest. I got ninety percent of the the ding. You know the the <laughs> you did it right. You did the right thing. Yeah. Like I got ninety percent of those. So I got the. The fast ending, the meh ending, but I didn't get the super happy ending. Got it. I want to talk about a real fucking video game, Zeke. I want to talk Dude. about Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. Yay! Listen, after <laughs> playing Dark Forces 1 and being absolutely, in, not, not, I mean, not enthralled, but like I enjoyed the fuck out of playing that game. I had so much fun playing that. Uh, I did not expect to have as much fun as I did. I didn't even know it was an FPS, to be honest with you. I was like, all right, Star Wars Dark Forces. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I'll play. Everybody seems super hype about it. I see what the hype was about. It's a very fun game, and it's still a very fun game. There's there's very little old on it uh, in the in the previous game, in the in the fact that you can use the mouse to go, uh, you know, look. Yeah. But you can't use the mouse to face up and down. You have to use – I actually put them on the mouse – uh, thumb buttons to look up and to look at. Um, the auto aim really helped for that game. This game fixed that. It's all mouse look. Awesome. Uh, the key binds were made by someone who I'm guessing has broccoli for hands <laughs> or something. Okay. <laughs> like I can't explain yeah. we all why know they about old broccoli the hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the legendary they... <laughs> developer <laughs> Lucas R. Oh shit! This is a broccoli hands game, <laughs> and he was working with Suda Fifty One. Holy shit! Yeah, there's this is Kojima, be... there's Suda Fifty One, and yeah. old uh, Brock last name Lee yeah. Hands. Yeah, <laughs> Lee Hands. Yes, actually Lee is his middle name. <laughs> Brock Lee Hands. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Anyway, but yeah, like the the key bindings were all fucking weird and all over the map. Um, so I that that was a kind of a chore. Like after getting it running, this game was a bitch to get running too. Um, it didn't work and really no for the same for the same reasons um i wasn't satisfied excuse me i wasn't satisfied with black dahlia the same reasons i wasn't satisfied with this it wasn't perfect it has to run the way i want it to run the way it's up or actually not even the way i want it to run the way it's supposed to run mm. the way the developers intended you to see it and play it um so i uh i worked through some stuff there was audio issues uh i finally i was like at the end of two hours i was like we got it guys we got the game it looks good it's full like you know it's it's four by three but it's full screen got it we're looking good and then i go to fire the blaster and it's like Pew! <laughs> <laughs> Pew! And i'm like god fuck damn it so we went through all these all these fixes to try to like like uh make it work we we actually found uh, it took some time to find a way to get Sound Blaster to work on Windows XP, which is not normally like compatible with or or doesn't like it or doesn't have it. So we we found some programs to do that. Uh, we got it. Same problem. Delayed. Because we, we tried to run it on Windows 95 first because it's a 97. It's, the game is from 97. So we tried to run it on Windows 95. Um, and it worked, but it was it had some problems. Delay, crackling audio sounds. Um so we're like, all right, let's try XP. XP is usually pretty stock standard. Like, usually will work. 
same problem. It's got Sound Blaster to work. It's playing the music, but it was all delayed and all this shit. So we eventually had to do the same thing again, get it to run on Windows 10 with a, uh, with a patch in order for it to be compatible with uh, our uh, current modern settings and all that kind of shit. Yeah. And then we eventually like worked through it. It took like four hours to like get to that point because if at all possible, I would love to run the game from an old OS. So you get that feeling, you know, you get that, you know, that like that. that it's like playing on a normal Nintendo instead of an emulator. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and people ask, like, people have asked me before, like, why don't you just get an old computer? It's like, I, I don't want an old computer with, you know. That's just more shit, I, I have I have a, I have a <laughs> PC with, with whole, like, five different OS, like, VMs that I can run shit on. Yeah. And an old computer is old. And it would take way longer. <laughs> and then you'd have to figure out how to like, capture it. Yeah, capture it. what happens if you want to play a game that runs on hardware that's that's more recent than that computer and then if something breaks you have to figure out how to replace it which is probably expensive yeah yeah that doesn't make any sense so yeah the hardware breaks. nightmare but situation thing, yeah once we got it running patched it windows 10 all that kind of shit it is just as good as the yeah, as 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 dark forces one so far i mean i've only got like three hours into it so yeah. uh it is it's difficult immediately more difficult than dark forces one um because they 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 learned something from like from the first game, like if there's a combination of people shooting and punching, that'll fuck them real good. Because the punching ignores ignores your shield, the blaster will hit the shield, but the punching will ignore it. So you'll take straight up just physical damage from anybody who is close to you. So they hit motherfuckers around corners. They hit them like they <laughs> pop up. They, you know, you go down a hallway and there's one like in a in a blind corner. Like, they just really like they stick it to you a lot of times. Um, but that's part of the fun of it. Uh, one of the other things I want to I want to pat myself on the back for that I accomplished for the first time. Someone was like, there was a platform that I couldn't get to and I couldn't see a, a, another way to get to it. No like drop from the ceiling, no jump from anywhere else. And I was like, fuck, how do I get to that? Sorry, I was right by. No, How do I get to that? My One of my chats said, uh, do a grenade jump. Oh, like, yeah, they, grenade jumps. But the devs wouldn't put a grenade jump in there on purpose. Like, a grenade jump is an exploit, as far as I know, right? Nah. <laughs> Me too. I was I was like, yeah. I, I was completely unaware of that. But yeah, I just I threw a grenade down. It, it blew up, and I tried to jump on the same, like, as close to the frame as it blows up. Whoop, and I was just, like, up there, like, Hey, that's pretty easy. <laughs> I did a gamer thing. Yeah. Good job. This is, I, you, you moved on. Yeah. We were talking about respawn, uh, making an FPS. If this is like where they draw from, that's very exciting. Uh, this is some of my like favorite games to play back in the day. Uh, oh yeah. That's good stuff. That's really good stuff. This was, this oh. is Kyle Katarn, right? That's who the character is. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Play Kyle Katarn again. Yeah. Uh, who is on his, he was accepted to the Jedi Academy. And then uh, his mom was already dead, I think. And then his dad was killed by a dark Jedi. So yeah. we got a Batman situation going sure. on and he's trying to find the dark <laughs> Jedi. And also like, if I, I put it to chat, I said, Hey chat, light, dark, a little bit of both. Overwhelmingly dark. I was like, all right, I'm yeah. killing all the innocents, all the droids, anything I find, anything that moves that can be killed. I'm killing it. Just in case, every light. because there is a morality like scale, I guess, in this game that sure. um, I, I, I wasn't in the first one. So I am definitely doing dark side playthrough and uh, killing everything that moves, and I'm having a ton of fun, and I can't wait to get back to it. I'll probably I don't know how long the game is, but I'm guessing at least two to three more streams. So Tuesday, Wednesday, look forward to more. If you want to watch some Dark Forces, there I'll be playing it. Sweet, it's good stuff. Good game. By the way, Burke, I gotta ask, has nothing to do with games. You watch uh, episode five of Mandalorian? Yes. Okay, good. Boba Fett? Or, or yeah, oh. Boba Fett. I've done that every time <laughs> I've talked about Boba I see Fett. the confusion, though. <laughs> no, no, I do that because I just call it Mandalorian because it's it's the same exact show. It's it's an in-between, you know? It, it, it's yeah. what it is. Yeah. No, I, I, I'll never mess anything Marvel, never mess anything Star Wars. I'm, I'm too hyped for that stuff. Okay, good. One of the same, then. One of the same. 
Uh, I watched it. it what was that? I watched it. It was good. Now that you care. Oh, I didn't know you were. Really? I didn't know you were watching that. Look, yeah, I'm with Co every more. week, where it's like, hey, did you check out that from three years ago? You know, the greatest show of all time. What's a TV show? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a lot yeah, of more. Give me, give me like a week. Too. Okay, a week. And then I'm going to just hibernate. <laughs> I, yeah, I've decided to Go's skip all the like, games in February. Yes. And just catch up on TV shows. So it's going into hibernation. He's going to watch yeah, every show of the past twenty years. I like Arcane and Winter Season 2 and yeah. Cowboy Bebop you remake so I can hate myself and just all sorts of stuff. <laughs> you don't get to see it. Like, we have a little conversation before the show starts. Like We have a little time to just chat. Yeah. And uh, like today, I was like, you ever seen this show? It's called Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually yeah. just I just wrapped up watching this awesome one called Full House. Nice. And um and I figured I needed something new, so I'm checking out Seinfeld and uh and uh Clarissa explains it all. I think was Timeline. the other one. Timeline. Oh man, you and Cletus would get along beautifully. All he does is <laughs> like old sitcoms and stuff. That's all he likes. Yeah. We tried to marathon uh, Lord of the Rings with him because we were like, well, first we did Marvel. Like he's never seen Marvel, so we did. Cause like, never okay, seen ninety five percent of Marvel stuff. Oh my gosh. Like, you know, from somebody like me, I like, grew up in the 90s where Marvel movies were like a joke, you know? <laughs> the Captain America with the plastic shield, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, seeing it now, these these heroes that we grew up with on, on live screen, it's just, ah. Uh, and it was, so we marathoned it with Cletus and he loved it. First time he ever saw it. Then we marathoned Lord of the Rings and I know I'm going to drive him crazy here, but we marathoned it with him. And we're like, well, what'd you think of it? And he was like, hey, it's, it's all right, you know? That, oh, you didn't you didn't, didn't get into that? He was like, well, I didn't really like it because, you know, I just wanted to hang out with you guys. And we're like, no, don't do that to us. If you're not into it. Don't just tell us you don't want to watch it. Don't force yourself to watch it because you didn't. You weren't into it. Burke, I, if I ever play on the Eco server, he can't be on it with me. That, those are just the rules now after learning that. I, like, dude, I haven't even <laughs> seen the second and third one. Yeah. I, I don't interact with Co outside the show because of that very reason. <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't seen the second and third Lord of the Rings? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen it. Okay. Yeah. First, first one's okay. I just marathon them again. First one is the worst. It's it is pretty. It gets it gets pretty boring in parts. Uh, no, no, no. In my opinion, Burke. It doesn't, it this doesn't is really get any good. I haven't good. seen. Now you know version. why I don't ask Zeke or Co for the I haven't TV seen and movie any opinion. of the Star Wars movies after one. I saw the, the three classics and the and the first of like the one with little tiny baby Anakin, yeah. and then I was like, you know what? Dude, the fucking books were the same. Fellowship was boring. Yeah. I was like, God damn it. Why am I forcing myself to do this? And then I tore through the last two. I was like, that's how you write a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just now listening to the book. Like, I can't, you know, I, because the way my brain is, like, reading, like, takes me a while. But using Audible, Andy Zirkus just did in 2021 a full reading of Fellowship oh, and it? Wow. all the way through. Yeah. He's reading it and he's voicing the characters. He has his normal reading voice for like, you know, there was a tree on a rock, you know, and then he did when Gandalf shows up, he's like, oh, you hobbit, all right, you know, huh. <laughs> like, I'm like, I know when he gets to Smeagol, he's going to do the voice, you know, like, <laughs> and I can't oh, wait true. to get to that. Yeah. I wonder. I, I <laughs> didn't know I'm biased. That. I'm biased because I did not. I also like, hope you want another hot take? I hated the way they, they portrayed or not portrayed, but I hated the voice of Smeagol. And the reason why for that is because <laughs> it, per it was perfected in the cartoon Hobbit. His voice was so haunting. I've never heard that. And good in the in the cartoon Hobbit. I was like, I was, I was, I was, I <laughs> is it because it comes off jokey, Zeke? Is that why you don't like it? Or is it because it became a joke? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't it didn't sound serious. Like in, in the cartoon Hobbit. It sounded like an actual person's voice that had gone crazy. It was great. My valid. This day, present, habit says. Yeah. They stole it. And like, you can feel the madness and it's so good. I get what you're saying. I actually, dude, I remember seeing that many times as a kid and I'd yeah. never thought about it until you said it. And you're absolutely right. Uh-oh. He actually Jogging sounded like memories. completely deranged. Like that line you just said, actually, it, it like it awakened that memory. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Yes, yes. And he's like paddling his yeah underwater. Oh, yeah. damn. That'll happen. Yeah. Cool. That'll happen. 
Uh, Co, I know you've been playing a bunch of stuff. Elix, Shadow Warrior. Uh, how's the Elix just run? Finished two today. Oh, you started Shadow Warrior too? Yeah, yeah, I just saw that. Done. I'm done with it. You're done oh, with man. Elix, or you're done with uh, Shadow Warrior? Oh, I, okay. I, I okay. did Shadow Warrior one and two, and oh my god, those games are such oh. hidden gems. Okay. They're so good. I can't recommend them more. They are hilarious. They are full of Wang, and <laughs> it's just it. They're so they're so good. Two especially like. I, okay, I'm. You, you, we want some hot takes. We want some hot takes. Here we go. Hot takes for games. Uh, Shadow that... Warrior Two is a better looter shooter than any of the Borderlands games. Woo! Spicy yep. take. Having I, not played Shadow I, Warrior, I have more two, fun uh, playing it. I have more I fun with the customization. I think that the stats are better done. I I I enjoy Borderlands Two for a looter shooter more than any of the Borderlands games. Um, it just does it super well. Like they did a great job with it. Um, it's 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 really 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 fun. I like the world better. I like the levels better. I think the weapon system, the weapons are more interesting and better. Um, yeah, I there's rarity. There's upgrades you can do. There's things you can do to farm and give them enhancements. You can play with the different mods. You can craft with them. Like it's it's pretty awesome. It's great. It's just great. What do the uh, does it? The the cell shading of Borderlands and the more realistic look of this does that have like something to do with it or not? No, for me it's more the mechanical stuff. So like okay. I like the that it basically you can you can get a gun you can spec it how you want with the different um the different ways like the 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 all the different um gems that you can put into them have a lot of different things that you can do. So you can make it so they can freeze. You can make it so they can electrify. You can make them fire different percentages of them. You can make them just do bullet damage. Uh, you can tweak with all their base stats as well. Then there's also stuff on top of that where you can like improve all their stats. And the guns themselves are also very different as well. So like, you know, there's shotguns that have, oh, and they, and they can have a, a random passive perk as well. So it's just, there's just lots and lots of customization on top of RNG stuff. Yeah, but is there a clap trap? Uh, they're not, no, thankfully. You know, the best character in Border. <laughs> Yeah. I can't finish that statement without laughing. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's tons of different guns. They they all have different effects on them. They, there's rarity levels as well. There's rarity levels of the the gems that you plug into them as well. Um, but yeah, it's just it's it's super cool, man. There's probably thirty different guns. Guns are a lot rarer in this one, so it's like a bigger deal when you get them, uh, which I like because they're they're super kind of unique in the way that they work. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and un, unlike without without claptrap, this game just has a, a huge amount more wang. Lots of wang, wang everywhere. Lots Basically of wang one giant, jokes, giant, yeah. uh, giant dick, dick joke. Yeah. Did uh, so. what came out first, Shadow Warrior or Borderlands One? Do you know timeline? I think was? Borderlands One. I think the Shadow Warrior, well, Shadow Warrior OG, which was not like yeah. the remakes, was like ninety seven. Okay. And then I believe Shadow Warrior One was twenty thirteen, and then Shadow Warrior yep. Two was uh, sixteen. Got um, it. but interestingly enough, like, and this is this is something that's also really cool about this franchise. Shadow Warrior 1 is a first-person shooter that is a story-based, like, beginning-to-end game. Right. Shadow Warrior 2 is a looter shooter with, like, for, with, that reuses levels, like, procedural enemies and spawns in the levels. Like, it is, it is taking the formula of 1 and basically turning it from, like, a story-based FPS into a looter shooter. It's a very interesting take. Now, it's even... More interesting, actually, during the show, by the way, a little bit of news right here. Uh, they announced not 10 minutes ago that the Shadow Warrior 3 trailer with release date is coming out tomorrow. Nice. Awesome. They, like, just tweeted that, which I'm super excited for. But when they released Shadow Warrior 2, I love the looter shooter take. I think it's fantastic. I did every side mission when I was playing it just because I was having such a good time. Um, Shadow Warrior 3 is actually going back to 1. So where Shadow Warrior 1 was, like, a relatively standard first-person shooter story game with a a lot of wang uh shadow warrior 2 is the the looter shooter and now shadow warrior 3 is going to be like a more cinematic like doom style environmental uh uh use and, and things like that like they're going they're going get another direction with shadow warrior 3 which is interesting so they actually have a 17 minute gameplay video from 3 that's a year old yeah i, remember I watched today for the first time yeah and um it's in the it's arena good, man the, like, circle is it like in the arena is it that video uh it's well no he's definitely it looks like he's playing the first mission oh okay like he, i didn't he, I have not yeah seen it, that it's then. it's actual like there's story content in it and stuff so we watched that today and it, it just looked fantastic 
It looked awesome. Isn't Shadow, like the grappling Shadow hook Warrior is there. Uh, there's lots of like uh, environmental interactions, like giant saw blades going around. You can kick people into, you can kick them off ledges and and stuff, or blast them off ledges, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Shadow Warrior Three looks fantastic. So hopefully tomorrow we'll get a brand new trailer and and kind of get the release date, which everyone thinks is March first, because both the PlayStation Store and the Xbox Store more recently is saying March first for the release date. <laughs> And, and the account is being like dead quiet. So we'll yeah. see if that turns out to be true. Isn't Shadow Warrior one like notoriously difficult? I don't know. Or, it's been a way too long since I played it. You're talking about the OG. Oh, you, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the the newer the newer Shadow Warrior. Oh, um, it was pretty hard. I played it on the second from hardest difficulty and definitely died yeah. a couple times. It, it, I wouldn't say it's like super hard or anything. Okay. Cool. No, it was great. Loved it. And then Elix, don't need to spend too much time on it. Elix is the Piranha Bytes oh, game. Uh, before we get off Shadow Warrior, uh, just want to say, like, if you are interested in those games, they are 90% off. And uh, you can get all three. You can get Shadow Warrior 1, 2, and the Classic for, uh, looks like, 9 bucks. Dang. Super worth it. Okay. Totally worth it. Especially if you like the humor and stuff, it's totally worth it. Yeah. Um, they're, they're a great game. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the only stuff with the Elix I was going to mention is still playing through it. Um, I, I love Elix. It's it's Eurojank at its best from Piranha Bytes. <laughs> really Elix is. 2 comes out March 1st, which I am super excited for. Um, I did a, a little pre-stream of, of Elix a um, month or so back. Uh, that does give me an early look, and it's shaping up to be awesome. Got all the beautiful jankiness that we expect, but at the same time, <laughs> a lot of smooth smoothness around the edges compared to one. So kind of doing Elix in the evenings, doing it again tonight. We're just kind of working through the main story and, and getting that all under our belt before two comes out because two happens like almost directly after one. So a lot of the stuff that happens in one is, is good to know for two. Yeah, nice. It's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Cool. Uh, I played some Pokemon. We don't have to spend any time on it, but I played that game. <laughs> uh, I still don't. I mean, I get Pokemon. I understand why. I just, it's not, a, I don't, uh, I don't necessarily think I'm the type of person that can lose myself to that game. And that's, ultimately how i feel about the pokemons i know that a lot of people are currently losing themselves to that current game uh <laughs> right now on this very website and more power to them it's essentially just like a super light rpg uh and that runs like dog shit on a switch uh <laughs> which that new one does not run well whatsoever it's pretty bad <laughs> fps um but the gameplay mechanics seem fun i i think if i actually played like a a pokemon that was on like proper i don't want to say proper hardware but that ran better uh than every other pokemon i've ever played i'd probably be a little bit more into it um i just can't stand it it's it just like sub 30 fps running around on a lot of the the situations is is rough um but i played it uh, i'd feel right at home after last month <laughs> <laughs> yeah you probably would to be honest I, well this is I will smooth, say this is like real nice yeah <laughs> JP, I am kind of curious to ask you. Um, By all means, I, I heard do. that a lot of people have a lot of people are just saying it's it's Pokemon and it's great progression. That's awesome. And then other people are saying, okay, well, it, it looks like crap, but it's still a fun game. Mm -hmm. And then a third group of people I'm hearing now are starting to get a little bit more vocal, where they're saying like, yeah, it looks like crap, and you can say it's a Pokemon game that's cool, but like when you look when you fundamentally look at the world. And like the different biomes and stuff, it's just empty and not well designed. Like after after the veneer wears off that it's a Pokemon game, like it's actually like really empty and not interesting. Yeah. I, I mean Did you get that? I didn't get super far into the world. I would say I only really experienced maybe like two different biomes, uh, ultimately. But it's pretty like I mean, what you see right here is the game. Like this is the open world. There's not too much going on in the grand scheme of things. Uh, granted, once you, you know, once they get into the pop-in area, whatever that sphere is of the player, there's a lot of Pokemon running around of different shapes and sizes and varieties and whatnot. Um, and like, I enjoyed that aspect of it. The actual stuff that I didn't enjoy uh, of the game is the first like two hours is very tutorial -izy. There's just shit tons of tutorialization in the game. Uh, and it's stuff like, Here's how you battle a Pokemon. You choose this ability, and then you the ability it you you fight the Pokemon, and it's like, why the fuck are you telling me this? 
And I get why. It's because it's a kid for games. Uh, Or it's a game for kids. Sorry. Uh, I understand why. What what did you say, Zeke? Is this something you can turn off? No, you can't skip uh, any of Uh, the tutorialization of the game. It's it's baked into the story stuff. But, yeah, that that stuff was a little heavy-handed, and it went on for a little bit too long. And I've even seen, like, veterans of the Pokemon games say that yeah it's very lengthy uh at the start and they definitely were were super heavy-handed with that type of stuff but um i like i did enjoy running around capturing different pokemon and and you know the rpg aspects of that type of stuff and collecting all that stuff um but co for your your original question like yeah i could totally see how the world feels kind of like sparse and and not like there's not too much going on uh, I think a lot of that is just hardware limitations, right? Like it only yeah. there there's only so much draw distance uh, that the switch can really provide. Um, but for me, the fun part is, and I don't. This is where maybe I I wonder for like a, a super big Pokemon fan. My fun of the game is seeing this thing and thinking like, what the fuck is that? Like, why is that guy so big? But for Pokemon fans, they see that and they're like, oh, that's a level 17 Alpha Snorlax. I need to get this Pokemon to counter that. And it's like, bro, <laughs> you already know all that <laughs> shit. But, oh, you know, I relate that to your... PoE and it's like I play PoE and I see that thing drops. Like, oh, yeah, that's got an X percent chance from that mob. So I understand it, I guess, ultimately. But it's just, yeah, I don't know. So what is what is your favorite uh, mashup name for this? Would it be Poke of the Wild? Or Breath of the Poke. Breath or of the Poke. Mm. Breath of the Mons. Breath of the mm, Mons is pretty Mons. good. Mm. I kind of like that. I like Breath of the Mons. Mons is a wild. Yeah. I think I'd go with Breath of the Mons. I like that one on the spot. I don't know if that's even... How about uh, Poke of the Mons? Poke of the Mons? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's... I think that's a, probably the best, actually. That might be the think, best, I, yeah. I yeah. don't think we're going to top that one. Here's me yeah. doing some saves coming classic pokemon uh <laughs> my man but yeah it's it's uh you know it, it here's what i'll say about it i'm glad that they're going down this path because i hope that they discovered just like capcom did with monster hunter world or if you make a pokemon game uh that actually is on like current hardware <laughs> and like proper graphics it will do very well and that's maybe like the one thing that's a little confusing to me is how the literal biggest brand in the fucking world when it comes to entertainment and video games and whatnot is still like this. And maybe that's how their profit margins are so high. Cause why would you do something that crazy when you could put this out and like, it'll sell billions of copies. Uh, mm. But like, I would just love a, you know, a, a proper gin, I guess is what I will say. Um, and maybe that's on Nintendo for not making that hardware because they don't go outside of Nintendo for all their games. Who could say? Uh, but yeah, I would love that. I would love for like people to realize what Capcom did with Monster Hunter Worlds in Japan and be like, we should do that. We should put all our games on PC and make extra money. But, you know, who knows? Who could say? We'll see if that ever happens. Probably won't. <sighs> Phone games look better? Uh, Yeah. I... Genshin Impact definitely runs better on phones than this game does on the Switch. I would agree with that, having played that. Uh, it's, Ouch. Yeah, it's a, it's, yeah, makes a lot of sense. So, Burke, do you have any, are you a Pokemon fan that I've just insulted for the past 15 minutes while you sat there quietly? <laughs> uh, you're good. Uh, it's, okay. There's not much in either. Um, I, I don't think I've ever even played one before. Yeah. It's really oh, weird. No. Uh, there's, I'm always surprised by the like kind of large friend group that I have that don't play Pokemon. Uh, yeah. And I, maybe a lot of it has to do with, they're just like PC gamers, but I also have, you know, uh, folks like strip and, uh, and kind of his entire friend group that like love this shit and have been lost in this game for the past 48 hours or 72 hours and are just playing it nonstop. Um, a lot of it's nostalgia too, right? Like they all played it on their Game Boys back in the day. So yeah, and you watch the cartoon, and that was that was hugely popular, and the and the cards and all, and just you know the audience grew up with it. Yeah, that's probably true. Probably a lot of nostalgia there as well. So, are you always this far away from the action, or do you can you get are you just that's where you're set? Okay, uh, you can set. move, so you can move the the player avatar around at this point. Oh, okay, you can okay. just like walk around as the fights are happening. 
Okay. Um, but you can also, the, the big deal with this Pokemon game is you don't have to battle to capture anymore. You can just throw the Pokeball out. And as long as they haven't like detected you, there's a pretty high chance that you'll actually catch them. Um, and that's like new for the series ultimately, as well as being like 3d and whatnot. Oh, so you, ch- you choose whether you want to get the Pokemon or battle with yours to level it up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And some Pokemon can't be captured unless they're, you know, low HP and blah, 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 blah. There, there's different restrictions for all that. Um, but it's Pokemon. I, I tried again. <laughs> I was hoping this would be the one that swayed me over. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm happy that it didn't because we're on the eve of uh, February, which is going to be pretty crazy starting this next uh, week. February. So. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the perfect uh symbolization of all that is that there's a path of exile league coming out and i'm not playing it right like that shows oh yeah you're skipping it i'm skipping the the league entirely so that's how crazy this next month is gonna be Uh, are you saying that or are you actually doing that i'm actually skipping the league yeah so what are you gonna play this place uh let me pull up my my schedule uh probably play dying light because dying light comes out on well i we could play it on thursday prior to poe but poe basically kind of exists in this four-day window because then lost art comes out on the eighth and so if i mm-hmm. were to start it it would just be kind of a waste of a league anyways because i would stop on the eighth to play lost art you're going full into lost Ark. yeah yeah i'll be nice. i'll be doing the one going full into it and also playing uh or doing the sponsored streams which i think a lot of content creators are doing Maybe. yeah i don't what are we gonna do for servers do you guys like, I have no idea. I I'm going to be doing Lost Ark pretty much my cozy streams and doing like Dying Light 2 and, and Sifu and all that stuff. My plan is to basically find out where Asmongold is going and, and not avoid go it like the play. Yeah. yeah. Same. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I don't know how that's, servers that's my work main plan. Well. Someone said that it's just US East and US West, but I definitely saw server names. So oh, yeah, I, no, names are out. They, re- they release server lists. I've been getting a lot of questions recently, like on, you know, like what server are going to be on? And I'm like, I, I can't tell you now because the last thing I want to do is like say something early. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, yeah. I'll have to look yeah. into that. Are you playing Bert? Yep. You're going to do the lost. Star. Is, is the entire crew playing or just you? Do you know? I think everybody's going to be playing it. Yeah. Okay. The entire crew is yeah. where, I mean, like right now we're doing like we're doing our dying light one playthrough for dying light two. So yeah. I know like that's the goal right now is to do dying light two. But yeah, like you said, man, there's, there's path of exile, Sifu crusader Kings is coming out with its, First expansion too. Yeah. Also a console World release. Sport. Yeah. Same yeah. time. And you have Lost Ark, Warhammer, and then Horizon Zero Dawn, and then Elden. Like, what? What? This yeah. is a terrible time. Well, Warhammer. How do they do well. their Sifu? Don't count on Sifu. Yeah, Sifu. I gotta play Sifu. Sifu might be a March game for me. I don't, we'll see. We'll see. <sighs> I got. When did all the game devs get together and like, let's all just release at the same time? You're well, all it, it wasn't the game so. devs. It was the. Uh, it was the accountants that were like, we need to make this game come out <laughs> this you date. Won. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, it's hilarious because somebody linked me um, some some new indie kind of like ARPG kind of thing. And they're like, hey, you looking at this? And, I, and I'm looking through it and I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then, you know, I, I pop up in the feature list and I'm like, oh, yeah, this looks good. And then I scroll up to the release date. It's like February 14th. And I was like, nope, not playing that. <laughs> yeah. Nope. There's tons that, no, of I'm games not. scheduled for February That's... that are just going to get demolished yeah because all these other big titles yeah you're, you're right Co. i seriously have no idea like it, it it's unfortunate because I'm, I'm sure that some of them are forced but any company at this point that's voluntarily releasing something in february it's just like just don't just push it back like yeah. it's it's you're 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 gonna get completely lost in the dim um and it, it's really unfortunate where you could be like a showcase item if you were to push it to like mid-march or mid-april there's like nothing coming out in april yeah there's not um it's very yeah nice. so it's 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 March it's unfortunate. pretty clear too. I mean, there's a few like like I know Ko's excited about Elix too, but like beginning of March, Shadow Warriors, yeah. Weird West, Weird West is like yeah, awesome. an awesome Weird West, some, some, yeah. uh, some arcane X devs, Raphael especially. That's a, he's been another working another on that. Another right? Yep. Uh, I I think so. they're either publishing sure. it or putting or or the devs behind it. I I know yeah. they're involved. All I know is, is that everything I've seen about that game looks cool. Like yeah. it, it looks to be like it could be something really special. You got Strangers of Paradise as well in March. That had some interesting yeah. trailers this past week that looked pretty mm-hmm. good. Uh, Tiny Tina's Borderlands thing oh, in yeah. March. Mm-hmm. So there's, oh, there's some games. March. Yeah. April, though, I, I don't think there's very much. So 
Uh, yet at least. Yeah. I'm sure we'll see some of these projects get pushed back, maybe. And yeah. That, you know. Yeah. We'll see. So next Sunday we'll uh, we'll be talking Dying Light for sure, and uh, probably talking about everything else that's uh, on the docket to come out. Lost Ark will be <laughs> kind of interesting after watching New World take over Twitch during that. I'm curious to see how much sponsored streams there are for Lost Ark. I think it's going to be a lot. I think it's going to be a lot. totally do drop frames in Dying Light 2 next week. In Dying Light 2? It's four-player co-op. We can kill zombies (laughs) while we talk games. (laughs) Not opposed to it. Zeke, if you want want to jump in, we could. I don't know how we'd actually... I'm just along for the ride. You know me, homie. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll see. (laughs) Well, I think me and Co will both be playing on Thursday night, so... Oh, yeah. I'll have an idea of if I actually really enjoy that game. I like the first one when and, I played and it recently. If they allow invasions in it, you guys could turn on invasions to let the viewers like invade your game while you guys are having drop frames. And oh boy, I don't know if they, they have the PvP invasions in the new one. Yeah, I don't know. I like we that aspect. If, 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 they're, if they're there, we haven't seen a lot about them. They might be though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think co-ops they're being hiding. turned on in the new one till day one or whatever. So now, guess, co-op is on day one they say cross play is not going to be available oh, on day yeah. One. okay yeah. yeah i was gonna say thank I think goodness people, I, yeah. I was worried that it was like we, we were doing this big playthrough co-op of Di- dying light one i'm like hey dog and chat was like they're not gonna have it on day one then no chat it was the cross play that they're not gonna have <laughs> got it okay thank dying goodness frames. for that Love it. dying frames nice yeah hey you know well to say i you can probably add, i mean the guy that voiced the main character his name is jonah he's a streamer Ask him to be on. <laughs> For, is, oh, wow, is that the yeah. guy that sounds like uh, uh, Troy? Don't they have similar voice, or is that completely? Uh, different? He's he's a he's a younger dude. Okay. So I, I yeah. Wait, he, was he the guy in all the promotional videos? For the, okay. Yeah, I know who that is. Then. Yeah. Yep. He's a cool dude. I, yeah. I was dude. I was working in his stream, and uh, I I was looking at my follow list, and he just had Takeshi across his screen. I was like, what is he doing? So I dropped in and he was like doing laundry or something. And I, I was asked Chad, I was like, what, what are we listening to? This sounds so familiar. Dude, Dying Light 2 got the voice actor for Kiryu from Yakuza to do an entire audio log for Dying Light 2. So there's this audio log called Takeshi and you can hear Kiryu reading out in Japanese like this whole episode of being attacked by zombies and like what he does. And he's like making his way to this apartment and it's super awesome he nails it it's huh. so good um but yeah he was just listening to that like hanging out and it was it was actually pretty great yeah. cool yeah we'll see you about next week bert thank you for coming on man we appreciate you being here i did you sleep Wait. what like your sleep schedule is crazy so what did you sleep prior to the show or are you going to sleep after this what's the plan no 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 i i slept i like my alarm just went off like <laughs> it's usually when i wake up it's like <laughs> it just went off so like 30 minutes ago but no way i like uh, you know if, um I, I in the stream like at 4 a.m. and I got plenty of sleep, so I'm okay. Fine. All right, cool, cool. We'll do some shout outs. Tell people where they can check you out, what you got coming up, do all that stuff. Well, I mean, like right now, me and the late shift are all doing uh Dying Light One. Uh, it's Cletus's first time. Me and, and the rest of the boys, uh, Gassy and Cream, have already played it, and we're playing through that. We're at the following DLC, <laughs> so we're gonna try to bang that out here on Monday, and then uh, and then it's Dying Light Two after that. And then, uh, geez, probably Lost Ark, you know. And then we're, we're, we're eagerly looking forward to eight eight player co op streamer battle to the end, Warhammer three. <laughs> we're gonna give that a shot and see how that goes. Okay, that's the plan. All right, <laughs> check that. Oh, out. you can follow me on uh, Burke Black. Yeah, that's my channel. There you go. I forgot about that. that's the, you know the important thing. Yeah, you, yeah, you know the channel. <laughs> Uh, let me know when games die down in March or April or whatever, if you're going to jump into that VR MMO. I'd be curious to see how that goes. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'll I'm, give you I might up. buy it and just jump into it off stream tonight and see what it's all about. We'll to I want to see it too. Yeah. Zeke, do some shout outs. What do you got coming up? Well, on the old Ezekiel shoe, we got Cam. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, thank you, Burke. First of all, thank you, Burke, for joining us. Uh, it's fun having fun having you on the show and learning about. Uh, and I, I, there's a part of me that just I really want to try it, but I don't know if video game RP is for me, man. But it was fun <laughs> to hear you talk about it, dude. It really is. Uh, thank you to Cohen JP for being uh, my co-host every week. 
My name is Ezekiel the Third. You can find me at or slash Ezekiel underscore I, I, I on most everything, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, and it's Ezekiel the Third, all spelled out on Instagram and TikTok if you want little videos. Uh, I will be on t- uh, Tuesday. Tomorrow is my day off. Um, so I'm taking, I love this new schedule because I take uh, the day off after drop frame and then I have a full day to take off. And then I'll be back on Tuesday with uh, Dark Forces 2. I'm going to keep playing that until either I beat it or I hate it for some reason. I don't see that happen, but <laughs> that's what I'm going to be playing until uh, Dying Light 2 comes out. And that's what's coming up for me. 10 a.m. Pacific every day if you want to check me out. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Do some shout outs. Hi, everybody. As always, a big thank you to JP and Zeke. And a special thanks to Burke. Pleasure having you here today. Hope you had fun because I know we did. My name is Co. Hi, I'm going to be playing uh, Vampire Survivors tomorrow, our last day before the big February rush. Uh, going to be doing Elix in the Cozy Stream. We're also going to be checking out Waylanders at the beginning of February into Dying Light 2, into Sifu, into Lost Ark, into Total War 3, into Horizon Zero Dawn, into Elden Ring, into Elix 2, into Shadow Warrior 3, into Weird West. So it should be a lot of fun. And um, hope to see you guys there for it. Anyway, on that note, hope to see you next week. If I don't see you until then, and as always, have a great day and thanks for watching. That's it. That's the show. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll be back next week, whether we're dying or lighting or just doing a normal show. We'll see how that goes. We'll let you guys know if anything changes. That's it for Drop Frames, though. We're out of here. We'll see you guys then. Bert, go get some sleep or do whatever you do normally. (laughs) Maybe sleep. (laughs) Maybe go sleep. No sleep. I'm awake now. It's too late. Okay. All right. Well, don't get too seasick out there. Early stream. (laughs) Yeah, early stream. Get my time stop, (laughs) Bert. Oh, no. Don't do that. (laughs) We're out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.